In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear ones, teachers and students, today's gospel is very well known to us, because pretty much every time that we're having a feast of the Theotokos, of the Mother of God, we are hearing these specific readings. And because today we are celebrating the feast of the miraculous icon of the Mother of God of Kazan, that's why we, are, we heard this uh, particular gospel again. So as we know, this event took place a few days before his passion. It's right after the resurrection of Lazarus, when his sisters Martha and Mary as a way to thank the Lord for raising up their beloved brother for, from the dead, they give this banquet in, it's, it's a way of saying thank you to the Lord. So, and of course, Jesus was invited with his disciples, but we know that they, were visited by many people from the Jerusalem area to comfort their pain. So, and of course, they were there at that dinner as well. So, now Martha, as the evangelist is describing her, she was running up and down, taking care to do the best service to the Lord. Instead, the other sister, Maria, she was sitting at his feet and just listening to his word. Now, at some point, Martha is approaching Jesus and saying, Lord, don't you see that she's not helping me at all? It's like, tell her something. <clears throat> and here, we are having two different personalities, which we are, we, we can see many times uh, throughout our life in our communities. So the first type, it's Martha, and the second time, uh, type is Maria, which Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're anxious about many things. But one thing is neat, and uh, Maria, she found the right way. So he is not condemning other way, either one of them. <clears throat> Just we have to understand which of are those two types of people. So see, Martha, she is the type that she likes people, to interact with people, to serve people, to bring people in her house, to just make them feel comfortable. From the other side, Mary, she is focused on the word of God. She is more willing to become his follower, his student, to learn more about the kingdom of heaven than the earthly stuff, the material stuff. See, one, she was focused on the material stuff to provide food and drink and whatever, to make Jesus feel good and make the people that was there to feel good. So that was her focus, which he completely ignored the spiritual side of it. The other one, she ignored the material, but she was focused only on that. See, it, both of them is good, but the best one is to find a balance in our life. So the one that Mary had chosen is very good, but it's good for those who decide to dedicate their lives completely into God's service. For example, monks. They are completely leaving their families they are embracing 
Christ serving and that's all so for, for the moment they decided that they are going to the monastery they are giving up anything which is earthly related and they are just living in poverty and prayer their entire life so this is what Mary has chosen and this is where the monastic life is based on from this uh, event that had took place 2,000 years ago in that house in Bethany so the, the other one unfortunately many times we're just so deep involved in, in this materialistic life that we're completely forgetting our duties for not not to only to create a relationship with God, but also to benefit our soul. So it's like you're you have something, you have an important job. So and you're working, 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 and you're completely ignoring eating or drinking, how long you can go. At some point you're going to start, to start feeling dizziness and your body is going to collapse, right? So what makes us think that we can live without the spiritual aspect of life? Without God, because God is the source of life. So we are starving our soul to spiritual death. Because we, in this way, we're not killing only our body, but also our soul and we're condemning it to the eternal punishment so it's our own choice we are making those choices it's not God that is punishing because we know that he is a loving God we are punishing ourselves but not uh, by not making the right decision the right choices in our life so that's what we have to make sure that we bring the balance you know to feed both and soul and body so to make everybody happy in this way because you cannot serve only the body and ignore the soul so then your soul what is going to to do what is going to to find the comfort and the strength if you're not feeding it at all you're not attending the church you're not praying you're not fasting you're not doing any good works you're just focused to gain wealth to gain money so, and you're losing completely the connection with the divine world. So, that's why, my dear ones, it's important for us to listen to these words of the gospel because in the continuation of the gospel, a completely strange woman that has nothing to do with that group kicked in when he answered this answer to Martha and she said blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts that you saw so here this woman inspired by the Holy Spirit is appointing to the chosen one the mother of God that was the ultimate vase that could hold the son of God, the word of God and not be burned at it, at his, as it was prefigured by the unburning bush uh, in the wilderness during Moses' time. So as that bush was kind of burning but it was untouched by fire, right? So the same thing her being a human being as us she took she received in her womb the son of god but she was unburned and she remained virgin as she was virgin so this is a higher mystery that our mind can comprehend we it's you cannot explain a mystery it's a mystery that's why god is discovering us to a certain point we can try with our mind to explain things, but as 
is a mystery how she conceived from the Holy Spirit without, without man. She bore her, him, cared him for nine months, gave birth to him, and she still remained a virgin. So this is a big mystery. So, and he's saying in answer to that woman that all this is good, but rather blessed are those that are listening to the word of God and following it, implementing this word. So pretty much he's saying, yes, she is the greatest among men, but you can become like her by listening the word of God and following it, implementing the word of God and keeping the commandments and being obedient to God's word and his commandments. And we can become like her. So what makes her so different from us as we are saying that she's greater than the cherubim and the seraphim and the cherubim, right? Why is that? Because from the promise that God gave to Adam and Eve, he could not find any human being to be that obedient and devoted and have this pureness of heart and mind. She was the only one that was found pure. And that's, that's why she was the chosen one. So can we do that? Yes. It's easy? No. But it's not impossible. Right? What the Lord said, what is impossible with, with men is possible with God. So if we always put our trust in God, because we know as human beings we are weak. If we want to take this upon us with our own understanding and with our own strength, no. I tell you definitely it's impossible. But with God, because He is love. And he just wants to test us to see if we are willing to accept. And when you are willing to accept, you just make the first step. That's all that is request requested from us. Everything else will be given to us by him, by God himself. He would make the other 99 steps for us. But just the first, he's, he want, he's willing to see if we... We want him in our life, which is unfortunately we see that we took God out from the society, from our families, and everything seems to be collapsing because he is the cornerstone. Without that cornerstone, the building will collapse. A small earthquake and the building is done. So exactly. A small earthquake from the, from the evil forces in our life. And if the cornerstone is not in our life, then we are collapsing. So that's what is important, my dear ones. We have to make sure that we accept this cornerstone and we put it on the foundation of our life, in, on the foundation of our families, on the foundation of the education of our children and so on and so forth. When we will do that, then nothing can destroy our lives. Nothing can trouble our families, our society. But because we are ignoring that particular cornerstone, that's why these things are happening in today's society. So let's make sure that we are embracing the cornerstone and putting it as a foundation for us, for our families, and for the future generation. Amen. God bless you all.